Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem range sum query 2D immutable. So we're given a two dimensional matrix and we wanna be able to handle queries that calculate the sum of a portion of this matrix basically a sub matrix. The sub matrix, which, you know, for example, something like this is going to be defined by two points, the upper left point, which will be given with the row and column coordinate. So for example, this one, and by the way, we know that there are values for the column. There are values for the particular row. So if we were given row one, column two, that would correspond to this point being the top left. Now for bottom right, for example, if we were given this one, row two, column four, we need to then calculate the sum of this little matrix, which is not hard to do. Of course, we could write a for loop, a nested for loop, starting here, going through the entire row, and then going through the entire next row, the pseudocode would look something like this, where the outer loop is gonna go row by row and the inner loop is gonna go column to column in that particular row and just keeping track of the sum, right? We're just gonna add to this whatever the value is at a particular uh, position and then get the total and then return that total. That's pretty easy, but we're actually going to be calculating uh, this for many sub matrices. So this one, this one, and we could have a bunch more. We might do it for every one possibly, right? So that's not gonna be super efficient. The idea behind this problem is built on top of prefix sums. And you would know that if you solved the easier version of this problem, which is range sum query one dimension. The summary is that if we just had one dimension, we wanted to calculate, okay, this portion of the array, we could do that by taking the prefix sum of this and then subtract from it this. And then we would be left with the remainder, which is this. That's what we want. Now, why do we care about prefix sums? Well, they can actually make things a lot more efficient because we can calculate the prefix sum of this row in big O of n time, right? Three, this is also three, this is four. I'm just taking the previous value, adding the current value to it. So this is eight and this is 10. We can do that in big O of n time. And once we've done it in big O of n time, we can get the range sum query for every single possible subarray. And there's more than n subarrays. That's why this is efficient. There's something like n times n minus one different subarrays. So in the worst case, to calculate every subarray would have been n squared, but with uh, prefix sums, this is big O of n time, because for any particular subarray, we can do that in constant time after we have calculated all the prefix arrays. The idea behind this problem is very similar, but maybe a little bit more complicated because yes, this is two dimensions, but it's nothing that a little bit of geometry and math can't handle. So let's say we were talking about this green square over here. We want to get the sum of this. Using the idea of prefix sums, what kind of pre-work could we use to calculate this, uh, the sum of this matrix in constant time, given that we've done some pre-work? Well, assuming that we calculate the size of this, subtract from it the size or, or the sum of this, and also subtract from it the sum of this, we would get pretty close to the result, but notice how we had to subtract this position twice. So then we would re-add this position to counteract that. And then we would have the sum of this portion. The good thing is we can do this and it's actually pretty simple. The idea is that for every single point in the entire matrix, we're gonna assume that this is going to be the bottom left of a sub matrix. And we're gonna assume that the first point in the matrix is always gonna be the top left. So we want to calculate the sum of this and store it in the bottom right corner. And we wanna do that for every position in the matrix. Now, first of all, how are we even gonna do that? We know that if we can do that, we can get any sum region in constant time. But how can we do the pre-work? Well, it's not too difficult. First, it's gonna be just like taking prefix sums. So we're gonna put a three here. We're gonna get this prefix sum, then we're gonna get this prefix sum, 
this prefix sum, this prefix sum, et cetera, et cetera, storing that prefix sum in the bottom right value. But doing it for a row is pretty easy, but then doing it for the second row is a little bit more difficult, but it's still gonna use the idea of prefix sums. We're gonna get this prefix sum, add to it the prefix sum that we calculated up above. What that's gonna give us is this area. And if we do that here, Right, we get this prefix sum and add to it the above value, which is this prefix sum, we're gonna have this, right? The idea is the same for any particular point. So for example, if we wanna get the value that's gonna go here, well, we can get this prefix sum and by taking the value right above it, we're gonna have th uh, the entire area of this. And by getting the value that's stored right above it, we're going to get the, uh, the, the total sum of this area. So that's actually the entire idea of this problem. There's one last little thing that I wanna mention that's gonna make coding this a little bit easier. Imagine if we were told to calculate, uh, let's say this was the top left, this is the bottom right, so therefore we wanna get the sum of this area. This is kind of a very simple case, but in terms of code, it's actually gonna be an edge case because what we're gonna do is first we're gonna get the area of this, and then we're gonna try to get the area above it, but we're gonna notice that the row above is out of bounds. So we're gonna need like an if statement or something to kind of detect that. And also to the left, we're gonna to try to get the area to the left of it, but we see that the column is out of bounds. So again, we're gonna need an if statement to detect that. We can get rid of these edge cases by basically having a matrix the matrix that we calculate all those prefix sum type things in, it's gonna be one unit larger in both directions, something like this. So these are all gonna be filled with zeros. The reason why is because if we were trying to get the area of this, and then we wanted to subtract from it the top, we would look at this value and it's zero, which makes sense because really we're not subtracting anything from this area. So by subtracting zero, we accomplish that same thing on the left side, same thing on the top left. So doing the pre-work for this problem is gonna be big O of N squared, but then every single subsequent sum region call is going to be constant time. Now we are gonna allocate extra space, which is roughly the same size as the input matrix, so we're gonna need N squared memory. Okay, now let's finally code it up. The first thing I like to do with any kind of two-dimensional problem is just get the dimensions of the matrix so we can uh, get the length of the matrix, which will give us the number of rows in the matrix. We can get the length of the first row of the matrix, which will give us the number of columns in the matrix. Now, the goal of this init function is basically to initialize the uh, prefix matrix. You can call it whatever you want. I guess I'm just gonna call it sum matrix or sum mat for short. I'm gonna initialize this, like I mentioned, to be the same size as the matrix except plus one in both uh, directions. Every row should be of size rows plus one, and every column should be of size uh, columns plus one. If you're not familiar with Python, this is called list comprehension. Basically what I'm doing here is creating a matrix, initializing it with all zeros, and the number of rows is gonna be rows plus one, and the number of columns is gonna be columns plus one. Actually, I think I have these reversed, so this is actually gonna be columns, and this is gonna be rows. So one row has this many columns and this is the number of rows that we're gonna create. So now we're gonna go to our handy dandy uh, nested for loop. We're gonna go through every row and we're gonna go through every column. But one thing to remember is that the matrices are not the same size. We're gonna actually have to offset when we access the row column uh, of this matrix, we're gonna have to offset it by one because we know we have those placeholder zeros. Uh, for any particular row though, what we wanna do is calculate the prefix sum for that row. That's pretty straightforward. What we're gonna do here is just add to it whatever value we have at this coordinate, at this row column coordinate. Now the goal of this for loop is to update our sum matrix at the coordinate row column, but not quite because we do have to offset this. So offsetting it by adding the plus one because we know that the first row is gonna be all zeros. The first column is gonna be all zeros. And the value we're gonna assign here is going to be the prefix sum plus whatever is above 
uh, this, right? That kind of rectangle that's above this position. How do we get that? That's pretty easy because that's kind of what this sum matrix is storing in the first place. It's giving us the area of rectangles and the above region is just going to be self sum matrix row plus one, column plus one. That's not above. That's exactly where we are right now. Uh, but we want the row above, so we're gonna subtract one from the row, which is gonna leave us with just row. So that's it. That's how we initialize our sum matrix. Now, calculating the sum region is gonna be really easy. Now, I could do this with like one or two lines of code, but I'm gonna use extra code to make it very, very clear what exactly I'm doing. So remember, row one and column one define the top left, row two and column two define the bottom right. And we're gonna use these values on our sum matrix. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just add one to all of them because we know we require that offset when we're accessing the sum matrix. So you can see I've just added one to each of them, very simple. So now we wanna get the area of four rectangles. Remember, we want to get the area of the entire rectangle. The bottom right is what I'm gonna call it. So we're gonna access our sum matrix at row two and column two. Remember this, in this case, we don't need to do the plus one offset. We already did that to all of them. So we're gonna take the bottom right. We also want the above area. We can get that by saying uh, R2 minus one and then getting the same column, column two. Even if this goes out of bounds, we don't care, remember? That's why we pre-filled the first row with zeros and the first column with zeros. I'm gonna copy paste this because we're gonna do something similar now. So the left region is going to be, actually for the above region, we want everything above and we know that the top left is R1. So we actually we want R1 in this spot. Sorry if it's not clear, but I highly recommend going back to the visual drawing or drawing it yourself to kind of re-remember what we're doing here. Okay, so for the left region, we do want row two. We don't need to subtract one from it, but we want column one, which is the left position, minus one to give us what's to the left. And then lastly, we want the top left area because ultimately what we're gonna be doing here is returning the bottom right, which was the entire area but we know we have to subtract what's above and we have to subtract what's to the left. But when we subtract both of these, we're subtracting the top left twice. So we have to re-add that back in. Uh, and to get the top left, it's pretty easy. We get row one, which is the top left, and then subtract one from it. We get column one, which is the top left, and subtract one from it. So I hope this makes it really clear exactly what is going on. Now let's run the code to make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, yes it does, and it's very efficient, at least this time that I ran it. <laughs> but I really hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It really supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon where you can further support the channel, and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.